as we go into section three of chapter five, we're going to be dealing with linear programming in two dimensions, a geometric approach. And again, there's lots of stuff that you would have to read over to get the gist of the problem. But a little bit is uh, you have a, a company that manufactures mountain tents. There's a standard model and an expedition model. The standard model is $50. We'll see that over here. And the expedition model is $80. And you'll see how they develop that by reading the textbook. Now, when they produce these tents, they have to cut it out of the fabric of which the tent is made. So there's a certain amount of time used in cutting. And then, uh, finally, time used in assembling the tent. Now, it's less expensive to make the standard version than the expedition version, and that's all described in the text. So what they've come up with is some formulas. This would be for pricing, and this would be for cutting and putting the tents together. They end up with these equations, and they give the qualifiers that it's going to be in the first quadrant. Now, as we look at the red inequality and the blue inequality, uh, what I've done is what we've done before, is put it into a T-chart where I get my X and Y intercepts. But again, you're going to be doing this, so you're wondering what kind of scale should I have on my graph? Well, as you look at it here, a largest x value is 16. Here it's 21. And my x values are going to be 32 and 28. So I think on my x line I would get by with 35 out here somewhere. And on my x values I'm going to need a 20 and maybe a 25, but my one here is going to be 21. Okay, so let me spend some time on this, and again, this does take time. Okay, by taking our points from the X and Y T-chart, X and Y intercept T-chart, we have here 0, 16, which is right there, going down to 32, 0, which is our red line. In our blue line, we have 0, 21 up here, going down to 28, 0. Now you notice that these two lines intersect at this corner point which is 20 comma 6. Now keep in mind it's not too accurate because of the way I make the graph, but with proper graph paper you can probably pick that out. Now since both of these were less than or equal to, we shade the under the line area where they intersect, and there is the feasible region. But keep in mind, our optimal production would be 20 of x, which we said were the, I believe, the standard tense, and 6 of the uh, other style tent. But I'm going to come back to this with showing you this in terms of 
what that is. That's your objective function. And you have it subjected to this. And you want to see something. So, again, all of this is described in the textbook. But they then go on to use this. So I'm going to modify this diagram some more so you can see this part of it. Take us through then the next stage of this. We have this pricing function where the smaller tent was $50, the larger expedition tent was 80. And if we put a value for P here, let's say 2000, the pricing is 2000, what would we get for this? Well, we actually get, if we solve for the letter Y, to put this in slope-intercept, by solving for y. So I'm going to take my positive 80y, in a sense leave it there, move this over to the other side, I get a negative 50, and then the p is there. Then I divide everything by 80. And I get this next line. And I can just cancel out that. And I have now my slope is a negative 5 eighths x over p. So as I put a value in here, and, and the book does this for you, let's say of 2,000, you get this particular line. So this line is outside of your uh, answer field here. Uh, the word they use for that is feasibility region. But if I put in 1,480, and you might wonder where I got that, and I'll show you, it actually goes right through this particular point here. And in this case, the x is 20. So 20 times 50, and the 6 is our y, so 80 times 6. That should give us the 14,800. That is the optimal, the word optimal. Value for the use of materials, the cutting room, the assembly, uh, the hours that are available, the workers, that is your optimal answer right there. And how did we find it in a sense? Again, it's going to be the intersection of your two inequalities. Again, there's much more to this, and you get that from reading your textbook example, or as you do the Quizbees, the practice in preparation for it. And again, graph paper is a really good tool.